Hi everyone and welcome to the Whole Dog Care podcast where we are helping you to live in natural harmony with your dogs. Um, today we are joined by the wonderful Jane Wilson, the Healing Rebel. She is an absolute expert in her field providing mobility and holistic and natural healing methods for humans but in particular people in their 40s. So hello Jane, it is absolutely wonderful to have you here with us, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. So that, oh, God, that, that was the whole sentence coming jumbled up. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. It was, me, it was nervous, not you. <laughs> and thank you for having me on today. I know, well, you are the very first um, guest on this podcast. So yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Um, so could you just tell us a wee bit about you and your business and about what you do? Yeah, so I am Jane Wilson, the Healing Rebel, and I love working with women who are committed to prioritising their health. A lot of the women who come to me are perimenopausal, menopausal, or they might even be postmenopausal, but experiencing stuff going on in their bodies. A lot of them have underlying health conditions or mobility issues and just want some help and support and finding out things that they can do to help their body move better. They can generally feel healthier, feel a bit happier, get into that space of healing, knowing that cure and heal are two different things. The, the, the chances of them being cured from whatever they've got going on when you don't cure from menopause, but we can make friends with the symptoms that we experience. Um, I use Pilates and yoga are the sort of two main movement modalities that I focus on, but I have got a background in, I was a personal trainer. Um, my degree was in sport and exercise science, so I've done all the functional movement and biomechanics and all the other add-on yeah. courses and things because I'm just fascinated with how the body works. Um, I then also, I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease in 2017 and when I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease I wanted to find ways to help support my system in the most natural ways that I could because the medications that they offer are really aggressive on your immune system, suppressing the immune system and quite often and particularly because I had been diagnosed with severe Crohn's colitis, they wanted to give me like two different kinds of medica medications to go at the same time. So it was completely annihilating. And I just, I tried it for a wee while and it had really bad side effects. So that wasn't something, a path that I really wanted to keep going on. I am on one medication just now, but I also do a lot of additional things. So relaxation techniques, finding what worked for me. Reiki has been really good and I know that's something that you do yourself with dogs. Okay. Um, I also started working with a medical herbalist so I've been learning lots about different types of herbs, different types of essential oils that I can bring in and a lot of it is about learning to listen to your body so whether it's the movement stuff or whether it's other healing things it's about if you want to take ownership of your own health you need to learn how to get quiet in your head, tune in and listen to your body because your body knows what it needs to be able to heal. It's so in, so intuitive and so knowledgeable, way more knowledgeable than any of our brains are. So if you want to be on that path, there are ways to do it that you can really yeah. quiet down and listen in and lean in. And it's not something that we've been taught. We've always been taught to trust the doctor. Trust. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's kind of the Somebody same our body and in my experience that you have yeah. to have trust with them but not put all your trust in somebody yeah. outside you. 100% I think it's kind of the same with dogs as well Um, you know we're going to get on to chatting about dogs too because people will be like well what the heck is all that got to do about with dogs but it's very very similar humans and dogs and their health yeah. and things we work similarly but like that you know if people think that if your dog's unwell the first thing you do is you go to the vet but very often, you know, dogs will be, as you say, like prescribed medications and tablet form and things like that, that have adverse effects on the body where there are things that you can do naturally as well. And it, for me, and I know that you you speak highly of this as well, is it's all about empowerment. It's all about empowering people to be able to look after their dog's health as naturally as possible. And that's what you do for the humans. <laughs> um. 
So obviously you touched on it there about your kind of passion for um, natural um, healing. And again, like healing isn't the same as cure. You know, um, we, we know that um, we, can, we can heal our bodies. We can make our dog's bodies feel better and move better. Um, you know, but we're ultimately not curing things, but we're helping them to live better. So just talk to me about the natural side of things and just what your passion is there. So just when you were saying that, one of the words that came to came to mind is connection. So for the human element, that's connection to ourselves. For dogs, it's about that connection that you have with your dog. So obviously your dog, the dog can't speak to you and tell you what it needs. Very often, like, I know I don't have a dog myself, but my mum and dad have got a dog. And when he's not feeling quite right, he'll go out and he'll be eating the grass and he'll be doing stuff to make him feel better. Or he'll go and lie down and have a sleep and have a nap and just very much looks after himself. And when you watch animals do that, if yeah. we can learn from animals, because they are, they have to trust their intuition. They have to trust that inner knowing. Um yeah. And nature gives us everything that we need. And if you look at most medicines, they are they originate from some form of plant or herb yeah. in nature. The reason that they've become medicines, sadly, is because they want to make money from it. Yeah. And you can't you can't you can't patent or patent. I'm not sure how you say that word. It depends where you come from, I think. Um, you can't put any kind of license on nature. So they have to find out that single chemical in there that can potentially do the one thing that they wanted to do so that they can make money from it. And <sighs> nature doesn't work that way. Yeah, I mean, 100%. Um, I'm studying, like, animal herbalism um you know I'm, i do um a lot of herbal remedies for for dogs as well and a lot of it has come from literally just studying na like nature like animals and nature during their natural habitats and just watching what they're eating to make themselves feel better um and with the essential oils and stuff they've been used for like medical purposes dating way back to the ancient egyptians and i always say to people if it was good enough for Cleopatra and it's good enough for Jesus, then it's definitely good enough for our dogs and it's good enough for us. And my own journey kind of came into this because I suffered really badly from anxiety and depression and the antidepressants were actually making me worse. They were making me suicidal and it was horrendous and I needed to get out of that cycle. And that's when I hit upon my friend Kim who introduced me to essential oils and it just totally blew my mind it changed my life and in course of that it changed my business and now well I mean I, I always say I work with dogs for a reason you know I'm much more connected to dogs um, and like that as you say it's it's all about the connection in the mind the body and the spirit is all connected and as soon as we start to kind of you know leave that one bit unattended that's when we start to invite the illness and for me I look at the dog's whole existence that's why we're called whole dog here everything is you know from like their diet and nutrition to their exercise right the way through to how we can help with whatever they're they're experiencing um and I think that looking at the natural and holistic stuff is just amazing and people don't actually realize that they can do it. I mean, obviously for humans, it's become more and more um, popular now. People are going back to the roots of, of the proper medicine, um, but people don't actually know that you can do that for dogs. Um, and one of one of the things that I always start with um, is massage because it's just such a gentle, non-invasive treatment. And it's also a really lovely bonding experience with your dog, which you can help heal them from inside out. And I know that you do massage as well. And um, so do you just want to talk us a wee bit through the massage and what the benefits of it are? Yeah, so massage, as when I first did massage, it was when I was at college um, doing my degree in health fitness and exercise and it was sports massage that I originally started in and I had never had a massage before I started training in massage I didn't like people touching me I was like no 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 get away get away and then when I was doing the massage obviously when you're learning it you get massages as well as give yeah. them as part of your practice and I, and I think after the first day I was like I have missed out on so much in my life <laughs> you know, it's amazing isn't it <laughs> yes um 
and but now like the science that's out there that talks about the benefits of touch the healing power of touch just that skin to skin contact they know now like um premature babies they used to put them in a wee plastic tub with heat regulation now they're like get skin on skin contact yeah and there's the like the electro the like electromagnetic field between humans there's also that shared microbiome there's a lot of people there's a lot of information now about gut microbiome but your skin is covered in all those bacteria and viruses as well so that sharing of those things you might be deficient in some bacteria or something and you hug somebody you come into skin contact you touch your dog your body can then take that on and make use of that there's for such a long time there's been this aversion to bacteria and viruses that they are they're the devil we have to wipe them out blah 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 but your whole body is made up more of fungi bacteria and viruses than it is any other matter or any other tissue so we need to be able to to nourish that so massage is a huge part of that so you've got the the touch element for that shading you've then got your muscles can relax your nervous system can soothe a lot of people a lot of um people particularly with what's the word I'm looking for, autism, use weighted blankets and it's about that touch and connection yeah. because we get that hug, that's what soothes their nervous system, that's what helps them calm down. You don't need to be autistic or anything like that to be able to get that benefit. You put a weighted blanket on, you're like, oh, this is so nice. <laughs> and then if you do massage, it's the same thing. You're like, oh, oh. And so many people, as soon as you place hands on them, they go, oh, yes, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, Whole awesome. body melts in. And if you've got a good relationship with the the as like therapist and client, then the re- relaxation comes as soon as you get within the vicinity of them because your body's like, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to relax. So you, you get tension releasing out of the muscles before the touch happens. Then when the touch happens, that can help enhance it more. If you've got an injury, it can help speed up the recovery from injury. It's stimulating your lymph the lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system is your internal drainage system, which helps clear out any bad viruses, any bad bacteria, any excess hormones, any toxins that are in your system. If you're backed up in the lymphatic system, then that becomes stagnant. You become ill. Yeah. Massage will move that on. This is the only way to get the lymphatic system to move is to move your body and to do breath, intentional breath work. So that you're creating this kind of pump action inside. So massage is a really lovely way to help free that up as well. Yeah. And get that moving. And it's just it's very, it's very similar with dogs. Um, you know, it's it it does, you know, it eases the joints, it, it eases the muscles, obviously their nervous system improves from that too. Um, and like that, it just it promotes calmness in their bodies. So dogs that maybe suffer from separation anxiety or just anxiety in general because life for dogs modern life for dogs is pretty tough I mean we want to take them everywhere with us we want to dress them up in clothes we want to have parties for them dogs aren't designed to live like that so we are kind of placing all these strains on our dogs at times unwittingly and through love I mean um, we do everything for our dogs through love but we can place this stress on them. So massage just like that. It's just like, as soon as my boys know it's massage time, it's like, oh, okay, mum, okay. Especially like our little spaniel, he's just up for anything. He's like, yeah, you know, bring it on. Um, And they just love being touched. But in return, because I'm doing that touch and I'm doing that special thing with them, I'm actually getting the benefits as well because I'm using the essential oils. I'm taking the time to just be calm and be present. I'm I'm finding more more and more that I do it, the bond between us grows. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think I could love my dogs any more than I already do but you know that's um, that's just been that, it's just amazing um, and you know that's that's what I want to bring to owners of dogs as well as many owners as I can just creating this empowerment to be able to help people improve their dogs lives but at the same time to increase that love and bond between them because there's just nothing better than 
a wee snubble of difficulty. <laughs> it's just fabulous. So you, you kind of, you touched upon it there um, when you started talking about the lessons and you're like, no, don't touch me. Um, and there are dogs that are like that. There are many dogs that are like that, especially if they're rescue dogs, they don't want to be touched. And the way that we can kind of get around that is through energy healing. I've devised over the years an energy healing um, plan for dogs who specifically don't like to be touched and I know that you do um energy healing stuff for humans so they don't have to come to you to be touched <laughs> they, you can do other things so just talk us um, a wee bit through that as well. But Reiki was one of the, the first energy healings that I was introduced to and I got and I came across it when I was looking for different ways to help my body heal when I first got diagnosed with Crohn's and I was lying and lying on the sofa going, Oh, what can I do for myself? What can I do for myself? And Reiki was something that came up. Um and that just it's so magical, Reiki. Like yeah. there's almost like it's so difficult to explain how you can have, because one of the times I wasn't well before I got diagnosed, um, when was it? It was when I was at college. One of my lecturers was like, I'm going to send you an energy healing. And I was like, okay, whatever. Didn't know what she was talking about. And then when I started doing my training, I actually did my training online for the Reiki, which I, I was a bit like, oh, this is, how is this going to work? How is this going to work? But I remember when I got my attunement and I was sitting in the meditation and I was like, wow my hands are getting roasted like I could feel it and the woman was in I can't remember if she's in America or, or Australia like she's far away and she's sitting in a meditation sending me this attunement through the atmosphere <laughs> wow and being able to do that dis distance healing for people so you don't need to be in the room if you can't be in the same location yeah. for health or just you don't live close by but if you do live close by, then you can come. And even if you're in the same room, it doesn't need to be hands-on. It can be still from a distance if you're not comfortable being touched. Because obviously, if people have got a history of trauma, then being touched isn't always appropriate for them. Yeah. Being able to I mean, I find that with, with some of the dogs that I've worked with, you know, I've just kind of gone in. I remember one of the very first sessions that I did, the, the dog's dad was kind of looking at me as a, is this woman off her head? Like, what the hell is she doing in my house? Um, and, you know, I just let the dog kind of wander and get settled. And then we had some eye contact. And then I kind of took him a deep breath and I started the energy healing. And he was kind of, he kept looking at me and looking at the dog as if, what the heck is going on? And I think he was quite sceptical about it. But when I got home, his wife actually phoned me and she was like, this is the most chilled we have ever seen our dog this is amazing um, and now they're like regular clients and I've built up a really good relationship with them and it's but it can be a bit like that Reiki initially can't it in energy healing people are a bit like are you sure that's going to work what what's going on <laughs> but then when you experience it it's just like whoa it's it's just magical and our our middle dog Zane um he was a rescue dog. He was really badly treated before he came to live with us. He's lived with us for nearly 14 years now, but he still very much lives on his nerves and he now lives with cancer. And I say he lives with cancer because when he had his diagnosis, the, the vets couldn't really do anything for him because of where it's located. Um, he's an older dog and they were worried that he would maybe die on the operating table. So he's big. His prognosis wasn't good. Um, they'd maybe said a couple of months, and that was about six months ago. And he's he's doing well. Um, but like that, he gets his energy healing on a regular basis because he still has that kind of mm, please don't touch me, mum. <laughs> you know? Um, or or sometimes it's like don't touch me there, but yeah, I'll let you do your I'll let you do your energy healing. And I just think it's it's just such an amazing thing for people who maybe just don't like that touch yeah yeah they use it a lot in hospitals as well reiki particularly in like cancer and cancer yeah. wards and there's been research done where they had people who are attuned to reiki delivering reiki people who are not attuned delivering reiki and then people not getting it and both groups of people who got reiki whether the practitioner was attuned or not still got more benefits than the group that didn't get any reiki at all oh. So it sounds a bit woo-woo, but how can it be if somebody who's not even trained in it was able to help get the benefits? It's all about that intention. And 
the desired out like that belief that there's going to be a, des- a good outcome that you're going to get something positive from this now obviously when you're working with a dog they can cognitively have that conversation about <laughs> it but they, I, I think they sense like they sense things that, oh, like and I know Bradley my dad's just turned into the street because he's up and he's like where is he where is he where is he he knows when he's when he's on his way home like oh, sir. I mean they're so intuitive and they're much better at us than us than taking on the energy um mm. you know they their bodies just know where to use it and where to go and um like my oldest dog Ziggy he is well we'd be 17 actually in a couple of months and he was written off by the vet um about four years ago we had an episode of older dog vestibular disease which is kind of like a stroke um and they kind of written him off it was just like no just we'll just um we'll just put him down um as if he was like nothing <laughs> and I was like no I'll take him home thank you very much and I'll do my I did say woo woo on him at the time I'll take him <laughs> home and I'll do my woo woo and I, I diffused um, an essential oil blend around the home for him and I did some Reiki on him and within an hour of him being home he was barking at the doorbell and this was a dog who'd lain in the vet not responding to anything for the mm-hmm. previous 24 hours and then the next morning he was able to get up on his own paws because we were having to lift him out to the garden and he was able to get up on his own paws and go outside and go for a wee um, and that was mm-hmm. just just with literally doing the Reiki and the essential oils. Um, I didn't touch him, I didn't do any massage or anything like that. It was just literally. So it's, dogs really are, their bodies know exactly how to use the energy that we are giving them. It's just, it, it's fascinating, it's just, it's just amazing. It's important for us to remember that as well because they can then take on our energy. So if we are feeling anxious or angry oh, or something, then like yeah like that. that's that's why i always um well in part of the courses the massage and the energy healing courses that i have for owners um i teach people how to prepare the room but also how to prepare themselves um, and yeah. before they actually start doing because well you know yourself if you're feeling uptight or anxious or even if your partner or one of the kids or whatever comes in and they're uptight and anxious it rubs off on you you then go into a bad mood because they're in a bad mood so it's only natural that 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 would kind of progress onto our dogs or like for you your patients I suppose you've got to kind of make yourself because if you start giving all crap energy then your patients are going to feel worse too so something that I just I just remembered when I wasn't well last year my mum and dad were looking after my brother's dog and she used she's like super intuitive like on a human empathy like she yeah. she would sit I'd be lying on the couch in agony crying and she would sit and look at me and then she'd get up on the sofa and she would like lie right across the top of me now she's like 30 kilos so she was a bit heavy to be lying <laughs> she just like and she just lay there and looked at me and Bradley would sit and kind of be like what is going on up there <laughs> like he knew there was something wrong but didn't know what to do about it yeah Wait, she was like I'm giving this woman all my love right now and she'd just lie top of me and oh, breathe on me that's amazing she was trying to heal you with her love yeah, it was so lovely. <laughs> amazing. That's just so fabulous. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us today, Jane. It's been an amazing insight. Um, how can people get hold of you if they are looking to learn more about, you know, like healing themselves naturally? How how can people get in touch with you? Where can they find you? All my information is on my website, which is iamjanewilson.com. I'm on Instagram and TikTok as I am dot Jen Wilson. I'm on Facebook, YouTube <laughs> as I am Jen Wilson. And I'm on Pinterest as the Healing Rebel. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Hopefully, you know, I'll share all the links as well. Um when, you know, the, the podcast and the blog go out and um, so people can get can get a hold of you. But thank you so much for joining me today and for that insight. Um I hope everyone's enjoyed our conversation and we will see you on the next episode of Whole Dog Care.